Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited and welcome to New Toy Tuesdays, an occasional slot where I show off something shiny that has come my way. Um, wait a minute, it's not Tuesday, today is Monday, what gives? Well, I've been prattling around all weekend with something rather special here and uh, I just couldn't wait another day to uh, put this video out because if you're an electrician, this is going to give you a wiring wide on. Uh, it's new from Holologic Scancraft, a name which is, I'm sure, familiar to those of you who work in medical locations as they're a big noise in medical imaging technology. So what are they doing on straying onto electrical installation turf? Well, we've all had to drill into walls before. Stud, brick, block, dot and dab, whatever the type, it's always a risk that there's something lurking behind the wallpaper or the pretty paintwork, ready to get pierced by your 6mm masonry bit. Although we electricians are supposed to comply with prescribed zones for our wiring, what DIY Dan does, or where the plumber or gas fitter install their pipes is just anybody's guess. And until now, the only heads up we had was with a traditional stud finder, which is basically a box that sucks up a nine volt battery and does absolutely nothing useful. You can rub them along the walls, across ceilings, or around the gusset of your trousers for all the good they do, but they will always indicate there's a live wire there somewhere, even when there's demonstrably not. So I guess one day someone in R&D at Holologic Scancraft was putting up shelves and drilled into something they shouldn't have, inspiring them to exclaim aloud, if only I knew of a company who made ultrasonic imaging devices that could see what's behind a solid surface. Hang on a minute. Lo and behold, this gadget came into being. You may have already seen this being demonstrated at a Lex this year. If so, do let me know what you thought, but uh, enough of my blather, it's time for a demonstration. The processing power for this device comes from a, a standard PC uh, and it connects via mini USB, curiously enough, not micro USB. Uh, not sure why that is. If I just remove the dust cover from the rear of the gadget though, and that reveals our mini USB port, as well as an SD card slot, curiously enough. The, the manual just mentions that's for future expansion, so I don't know what that means. It's all rather mysterious, uh, but I'm, kind of, I'm just going to plug that into here, as so. Um, uh, as well as uh, possible SD expansions, another uh, immediately available expansion for this is a tripod because it has to be on a stable base in order to work properly. And this is a bit annoying because it comes with this weird non-standard connector. Uh, so you have to buy the tripod that goes with it. You can't just stick it on a standard uh, sort of camera tripod or something or uh, your laser tripod. Uh, that's, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? I mean, uh, this is a pricey gadget uh, and they want you to blow another 150 quid on their tripod. A bit annoying that, a bit naughty naughty in my opinion, but uh, I'm going to beat them at their game by placing it rather cleverly up on my laptop here, which is sat on top of a stool. So uh, that's one in the eye for their greedy shareholders, but uh, I reckon that ought to work just as well. Let's give it a go. Let's load up the software. I'm pointing it at my wall, which is dot and dab, and I know where the services are within it, so I'll be able to confirm whether this is a good test. Okay, jolly good. So if I click connect, we should get a picture. Okay, marvellous. Uh, actually, you know, that's a pretty good alignment. I've got the section of wall I want in there, so there's no need for me to adjust where it's pointing. Right, before I click the scan button, let's have a quick look at our default setup options. I'm going for a vertical scan here as I want to know what's in the wall, but if I wanted to look below a floor or above a ceiling, then I would use the horizontal option, or I can select a specific area to scan. I'm also going to leave selected this option to emit objects that are in front of the vertical surface my crosshairs are currently trained upon. Uh, finally, I'll stick to metric measurements too, as imperial ones are stupid. I don't care if you do get 13 schmeckles to a quat and 7 quats to a yurdle, it's not 1765 anymore. Notice it has already detected the distance between the aperture of the device and the target wall. It can be up to 8 metres away and we're just under 2 metres here. Alright, let's click the scan button to kick this off. Okay, it's, uh, it's now going to perform its initial scan where it looks to see what's in front of it, and rather cleverly, it can be set to ignore any items such as foreground furniture placed in front of the wall. That doesn't mean it can see through these items, it can't generally, unless it's cardboard or something, but uh, what it does is it blocks them out from the final render, so the picture we get is of what's in the wall rather than a confused mess from any items in front of the wall. And you can see there it's masked off the foreground stuff. Okay, now it's 
deep scanning. This is where the ultrasound is used to penetrate the wall with different materials giving back different reflections. Obviously the overall wall structure will have a uniform reflection, in this case both from the plasterboard layer in front and from the blockwork behind. So that gets filtered out by the software to expose the anomaly reflections, those caused by cables, pipework, structural buttons and so forth. It does take a little while and it's important not to move it while it's scanning or you'll just get a load of slurred nonsense back. You can see it's finished scanning and now it's processing. The time this step takes depends on your computer. This is a 2012 ThinkPad I'm using, so not cutting edge by today's standards, but generally fast enough for my needs. If you were armed with something newer, then this stage would be a bit zippier, I guess. Even so, we shouldn't have to wait too long. Okay, brilliant, so there we have it. Uh, but what do we have? Well, these splats are the adhesive splodges that glue the plasterboard to the block wall. We can also clearly see a capped mains cable coming from above to serve the socket outlet behind my retro ghetto blaster. And this line here is the old gas pipe to the fireplace. That's not actually in service anymore, but we can see it's still there. There's never been a radiator on this wall, but had there been, we'd be seeing the pipes show up regardless of whether they're copper or plastic. These yellow colours incidentally indicate a metallic return with the, while the bluish colours would show up for plastics, woodwork, adhesives and such. And if you'll notice as well, uh, we can also see the, the woodwork showing in this stud wall section that the TV is mounted on. The TV itself, like the fireplace and fish tank, has been blotted out as a detected item of foreground furniture. So although we can't see behind it, its presence isn't interfering with the rendered picture we do have. Now I mentioned it recorded the distance earlier and let's say I wanted to install a socket outlet on this side of the fireplace with the cable rodded behind the plasterboard from above. I can see there's a potential path down here halfway between the fireplace and fish tank which if I were to put the hole in the wall and rod up would miss any obstructions such as the adhesive globs. If I place a vertical reference line here at the edge of the aquarium, notice it's a bit distorted, that's because of the wide angle lens uh, of the thing, but I know this is a straight line down here, so it makes for a good reference point. If I then click here where I think a new socket accessory could be located, you can see the software shows me a line up the wall and tells me I'm about half a meter horizontally from my original reference line. Obviously, I can set multiple horizontal or vertical lines and reference points depending on what I want to use this for. I think you can have up to 25 points per scan, I think I read somewhere, I might be wrong, I'll have to check the manual on that, but the point is I can see where I need to drill and where I need to rod to avoid any obstructions. Speaking of the manual, it does say not to point it at people or animals, although the high frequency scans are supposed to be harmless, but obviously I did point it at the wife to see what kind of x-ray abilities it had, but I'm sorry to disappoint all you perverts out there, it doesn't show what's under someone's clothes sadly, instead you just get a confused blurge of colour on the false colour image when you point it at a person or animal. So all pretty whizzy, I'm sure you'll agree, but new Toy Tuesdays are only short videos, so this is just a quick introduction, and to really test this thing in anger, I need to take it out to sight. The price is high at £1,500, but what the hell, I've paid it. It'll cover its costs in no time with all the drilling and cable pulling we have to do, and as someone who has in the past pierced a gas pipe hiding in a wall, I know that's a mistake I don't want to repeat. For more information, including resellers near you, go to this website or click the link in the description. We have a ceiling down light installation coming up actually, where using this will be a no brainer. We'll be able to see all the joist snoggins, wiring roots, pipework. It's about as good as having the ceiling down. So we'll show this thing in action soon. Do watch this space. In the meantime, thanks for watching.